is Rebecca R. Jones with the Prophetic Art Challenge Volume 1, Lesson 1. And I'm breaking in the binding of my art journal that I'm going to be using for this challenge. And you can do the same if you're using an art journal. As we get started, I'll definitely take you through some things in this lesson to t tell you a little bit about what to expect in the Prophetic Art Challenge. So don't worry, stick with me. But first, we're starting with a bit of collage. You definitely do not need to do the exact same thing as me, but you will have access to things in order to emulate what it is that I've done in my own project. The concept here with this prophetic art challenge is going to be based on a theme. So this is going to have a theme for this particular lesson and I'm looking forward to having you engage with this process of learning to do prophetic art based on a particular theme and sharing that experience as a community. So in this particular lesson, I'm doing a bit of collage and painting over top of that. And I have all of this over on my blog. So every single video has an accompanying blog post associated to it. And you definitely want to check out that blog post if you're not seeing it connected. So get into the comments, into the description box, wherever it is around it, and find that link to the blog post where you're going to find access to more information, usually some more teaching, some extra information that you might want to know, such as links to supplies that I use. So if you see any supplies and you're wondering about what they are, or where to find them, I link all of that over on my blog, as well as any of some extra information such as what color did I use in a particular thing, any of that kind of stuff is over there and especially downloads two things. So this particular public domain, very beautiful vintage design of a heart is going to be over on my blog as well as some of the other elements that I'm using. So why am I using a heart? Well, this lesson's theme is harmony. And I want to ask you, I want to challenge you to join me in this prophetic art challenge. And this is going to be a bit different. If you followed along with my Bible art journaling challenges, they're different because in, in Bible journaling, we tend to study the word and then make a biblical entry, an entry that helps us to engage with that scripture in a more meaningful way personal way. And it's a more reflection of what we've been learning in the word. In prophetic art, what we're doing is we're actually asking the Lord to give us some information about what's on his heart for a particular topic. And then we're creating in such a way as to build up and encourage and help people to draw to Jesus through the word that we feel that he's putting on our heart. So in this particular lesson, as you can see, I'm just cutting the whole heart up into pieces and then I'm taking a collage of different elements and I'm cutting all of those pieces out so that you can see them coming together into one heart which has different elements. And for me, I wanted to start here because I've been hosting the Prophetic Arts for Jesus Facebook group for a decade now. It's amazing to think that it's been that long. And in that time, it has grown to be thousands of people. I have hardly shared about it at all, actually. Very few times did I ever share about it. And it has grown to be thousands of people because it's a project that's really on God's heart, I think. It's just a place for people to grow in God together and to share the art that he's putting on their heart to create, to minister to those around them and draw them to him. And I want to create this prophetic art challenge for a couple of reasons. I want to really help you find your voice in hearing the Lord and creating art. And you may not feel like you get it right every single time. And that's okay, because this is a journey. And you may not feel it, like you know what to do. And 
I want to encourage you not to copy me. In the Bible art journaling challenges that I do, it's very typical for people to copy the piece of artwork that I've done because that makes sense and they're trying to find a reflection of what it is that is in that section of scripture and it it can be completely normal. I will give you elements to download the things that I've done, but I want to encourage you to put your own spin on these things. And I want you to think to yourself, if I was going to ask God what's on his heart for the people around me, for myself, about the topic, the theme for this lesson, which is harmony, what would I create? If I could not speak one word and I had to create artwork only to speak what I want to say about harmony, what I think is on God's heart for harmony, then there you go. So do a few things. If you're not sure what God's voice sounds like, you're not sure how to hear his voice, then go look up in the Bible, harmony. If you can't find the word harmony in your translation, go look up in a dictionary what kind of antonyms what kind of synonyms are like that, and then start to study in the Bible to find what God says about harmony. And then you can start to imagine, if I had to draw a picture to depict what I believe God has on his heart for the topic of harmony, what would it be? Now, in my case, what it is, is I want to, make a prophetic decoration, if you will, over my Prophetic Arts for Jesus Facebook group, a, a wonderful, very large community that has grown so much over the years. I want to make this decoration that we are breathing from the same heart as God's heart to make a difference in the world around us and to breathe life into us, just like a, a human heart pumps blood through the whole body. I want to declare that the Prophetic Arts for Jesus Facebook group is a community that is very different. We are very diverse. Every single person is different. Some people are very Bible-based. Some people have incredible amounts of fruit in their life. Other people are just simply beautiful. A few of them may be a little prickly, but there's some beautiful flowers growing there anyway. Regardless of what type of background you come from, what you feel like you're dealing with in your personal life, what song you're singing, we are all part of the same community and we are part of God's heart to impact the world for Jesus through creativity. So that is my interpretation of what I think has gone God's heart for the people that I want to minister to on the topic of harmony. I hope that I'm demonstrating here what I mean by this. And at the moment, this doesn't look very interesting. As you can see, I'm just cutting out a bunch of pieces and I'm trying to not do anything too upside down because it is a little bit silly if you've got an upside down piece of fruit. It's kind of hard to make your brain do too much. So I've got one verse that's a little bit sideways, but for the most part, I've tried to keep things mostly up and down and I've tried to keep a balance where you can see that the scriptures and the, the different stuff is all kind of separated from the next thing so I didn't put all of the scripture areas in one spot and all of the other stuff somewhere else so what I did is I actually copied a couple of pages out of my one of my Bibles that's over 100 years old and a few other different things like this music. And I've put it all together so you can get the downloads over on my blog. And then I am just gluing this in. I'm using matte gel medium because it is a glue. You could use a different type of glue. I find that this is a very good glue to use because it is good quality. It's very smooth, but it dries completely matte, which is fantastic for projects where you're doing collage such as this. So I got myself going on what I was doing and then started to 
get everything situated and the goal with gluing stuff you may have learned this when you were young is that you always want to first glue under then glue over you don't just glue under under then over and then everything definitely is stuck in place i'm using this really rough bristly brush because I wanted to deliberately add texture to the paper and you'll see later how fun that is and what it does to the actual project. So this is a lot of fun and the the nice thing here is that when you create stuff in an art journal I think it can give you some freedom to let this be a personal journey. So perhaps you feel that you want to speak harmony over your marriage or your family and you can think of a piece of a picture in your mind that really captures the heart of what harmony would look like over your family life or your marriage or over a particular relationship or over your whole church. Maybe harmony comes out in a different word and it really means something different like that. So stretch yourself a bit here. Try and come up with an image that makes sense to you. If you really just love what I'm doing, find a way to make it really match for you by switching out the images that you're using for the parts of the heart something like that. But I would encourage you to stretch yourself a bit here and try and think if I can't speak any words, but I have to s say what's on my heart, what God's putting on my heart about harmony. How do I do this? How do I say with only pictures and then put it in an art journal? In my mind, putting in an art journal makes sense if you're on a personal journey here and you're just learning. If you are not new to prophetic art, you've been doing this a long time and you like to do things on a canvas, feel free to join me using your canvas or maybe make a sculpture, do whatever it is that your medium is. Maybe it's painting flags. There's a lot of room for diversity here. The topic is definitely harmony for this lesson. And I want to encourage all of us to live in harmony but I also really feel like it's part of the the destiny of this community is to be a place where we live in harmony with one another despite our major diversity in background and it's such a beautiful witness to who we are as a community and who God is in our lives and watch what I'm doing with the brush there I'm not just going in one direction I'm going in really odd directions, back and forth, all over the place, moving my brush in different ways. And all of this is creating a texture. So I'm covering the entire thing now because I want to make sure that I have that texture over the whole thing. So then I put it aside, let it dry and went to bed, got up and started in on this. Now this is going to sound interesting if you have watched Bible journaling you know that I actually teach something called page prep and I use these products to put a clear layer over the top of my Bible when I do Bible journaling over the Bible page and that clear layer actually just makes a huge difference. It's obviously a bit different than just one clear layer and you can watch my other videos to learn about that. But this is actually the traditional reason that clear gesso was created. I've created something here and now I need a real surface to create on top of. In Bible journaling, I do it so that I can actually seal my Bible page and nothing will bleed through and you can still see the text through it and all of that is fantastic. This particular clear gesso is a real favorite of mine because you can use just basically anything on top of it and it won't chemically react and it creates a really smooth texture. But even though I've got this smooth texture, the gel medium is still picking up underneath and that texture is really good. So I'm going to use some ink tense blocks for this. They come in pencils as well. I'm just going to use the blocks. You could use watercolor. You could use anything if you wanted to use the same kind of concept. I just thought I'd show you. I've got the 72 set. That's the full color set, but I'm just going to use the 
24 colors today and in fact I'm only going to use one color so see on the color wheel I've got this kind of orange color going there that's really prominent so across the color wheel from that is a blue so I'm going to pick something blue because it's not going to mix together because that's a printed piece and it's covered I can actually add a contrasting color across the color wheel and it will really make that color pop I started thinking that I would go in with more than one color of blue in the end I just decided to stick with one color of blue and it is beautiful so I'll link to all of that stuff over my blog and that's it I'm just going to get in there and create and I love how this looks it's really really popping off the page as you'll see as we go along it's really simple so I've got two little tubs of water there my jars and what I'm doing is I'm always moving the art journal around so that I can use my brush in the most effective way so the color always wants to be pulled by gravity to the tip of your brush so if you need to put color on you can know that the color is always going to be on the tip of your brush unless you get all of the color off so I've got a, a dirty jar of water and a clean jar of water and occasionally I might have to replace it it doesn't make a huge difference since I've only got one color but it's really good to have two jars of water like this so that I can get it cleaned in that dirty one and then make sure it's definitely clean in the clean one and as I go through I can add the darkest amount of color on the outside and then I'm getting very very light towards the inside right next to the heart and then later on I'll go in and I'll add dark right next to the edge of the heart and by doing this I'm gonna have an extreme contrast right as a highlight right behind the heart and a darkness just on the heart itself right on the edge and that shadow and highlight really contrasted right next to each other is going to make this feel like it's popping off the page and I have talked about this in other lessons on my YouTube channel before there's something about understanding values and you can see that I've got a really light color I've got a very dark color and I've got something in between I've got at least three values there maybe four but I think it's a really good idea to see what you can do to try and get about four or five at least five different values and it's great if you can get seven values just that very very dark color all the way through to white and the different amounts it really makes a difference in helping something pop off the page so I'm not leaving anything stark white because it's a bit intense but I'm wiping away almost all the color so it's only staining that essentially white area and it's so simple you can see how easy this is you could collage an idea you could use the same concept think about what harmony means to you what God has put on your heart for this topic and if you're not sure what God is speaking to you about just ask yourself what is it that I can learn about harmony you know these these things are like unity those types of words come to mind when we think about harmony we think about being in unity and as we go into scripture there's an awful lot about unity so I want to encourage everybody to live in unity I think that this is something that doesn't require agreeing on everything and I think that if we're gonna live in harmony with one another it's very scary to people sometimes because they believe that they have to agree in order to live in unity when actually it's not quite the same living in unity is just saying you know this this topic that we're dealing with here perhaps this isn't a you know salvation issue this isn't worth us you know pulling up the bridge between us 
perhaps this is worth us just saying we may disagree about this other thing but when we're with each other we're just going to live in unity with one another and that doesn't have to cost us our values doesn't have to cost us what we believe in it just simply means that we say what we disagree with stays at the door and what we do agree with is something that we can focus on together and we can base our relationship on what we do agree with and really set aside our differences and let those be for a different conversation with a different set of people and this unity this harmony can really take such a beautiful turn when it's done in a scale of community when you get thousands of people making a decision that what is different about us isn't what matters when we're together what does matter is that we value one another we care about what matters to each other and we just uphold one another with with care and love those things can make a huge difference in helping God accomplish what's on his heart so we get to partner with God's kingdom and his heart for things which is such a beautiful thing you can see I'm now adding some shadowing because this all looks a little bit one-dimensional and we want it to look three-dimensional at least two-dimensional we want it to feel like it's popping off the page and we can do that by adding it you guessed it some shadows so we can go in there and we need to pick our light source now i have a light source from the back that's lighting up all of the highlights right behind the heart but I also have a light source that's coming from the right, sort of bottom right-ish corner towards the heart. And that is why I have the left-hand side having a much darker focus. Now, I've got a few different sources of light and you'll see that as I go. It's really good practice if you're new to painting to pick somewhere imaginary that your light is coming from and then just put your shadows on the opposite side so if your light is coming from that bottom right then everything in the top left is going to be darkest if it's going to work like this then everything on the left if it's an individual shape you're going to notice that 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 top left of that piece is going to have the darkest shadow now you might be wondering how i am tying this in with scripture and there's a couple of sections of scripture that came to mind when i was doing my own seeking the lord about the topic of harmony so I was led to 1 Corinthians 12 verses 15 through 19 and Romans 12 through, or sorry, Romans 12, 16. And in the English Standard Version, that 1 Corinthians 12, 15 through 19, I'll just read it to you. It says, if the foot should say, because I am not a hand, I do not belong to the body, that would not make it any less a part of the body. And if the ear should say, because I am not an eye, I do not belong to the body. That would not make it any less a part of the body. If the whole body were an eye, where would be the sense of hearing? If the whole body were an ear, where would be the sense of smell? But as it is, God arranged the members in the body, each one of them as he chose. If all were a single member, where would the body be? I'm going to pause with that and just read the other section of scripture and then talk to you a little bit about what harmony means to me and what I feel like God's saying to me through this painting. So Romans 12 16 says live in harmony with one another. Do not be haughty but associate with the lowly. Never be wise in your own sight. Now these sections of scripture are really good. Obviously the whole Bible is so good. I could put any section of scripture and it would be amazing but there is something really special about this and I actually used a section 
of musical notes from a song called The Gospel Train, which I think is fitting because the message, the, the point of prophecy really should draw people to Jesus. And the gospel is such a message of his love. I want for the community of prophetic artists to be one that draws people to the Lord and who understands what their part in the body is and is really secure to just be that part. Are you the part that's a little bit prickly at this season of life? Are you the part that's just beaming with fruit because you're in your best season and you are in fruit regardless of what season you're in? Are you that really beautiful rose? Are you the one that really speaks the word and teaches? Are you the one that's creating the music? It doesn't matter what part you are. You're a part of the heart of God that is pouring life into the whole rest of the body. You're a part of what God's bigger picture is. And we get to live in harmony with one another. We don't have to be someone who thinks that we're better than the next person because we each bring something to the table when we sit as a family. And I would like to say that we can be family regardless of whether we disagree on this issue or that issue. What we do agree on is what we're here for. And that is that God can radically change the lives of people around him if we create what he's putting on our heart to create and then just sit down and really pour ourselves into that creativity and release it to the world around us. So what does harmony mean to you? To me, I want it to really speak. I want this lesson to really speak of us really becoming people who really gather from what other people can bring along because we each have something to offer and just because I'm teaching this lesson doesn't mean that the next person won't have a great idea of how to do something a little bit unique or something even better and that's the beauty is that we all get to bring something to the table. Now, you'll notice that occasionally I heat dry it. I'm not using a hair dryer. That's actually a heat tool, and I've got it linked on my blog post. It's a really great heat tool. It's got low wind and just enough heat to not really burn all of the stuff that you're using, but to just get it warm. It's a perfect mixed media heat tool. So what I'm doing is adding that really deep shadow right next to it, and you can see how it's making everything really pop off the page as I go further into it. And as I get towards the end, I'll put all of the veins in. And this is a really simple thing. It's not supposed to be realistic looking. This is supposed to have an illustrative feel to it. It's got that really nice bit of collage in the back. And honestly, I think that collage can be a little on the cheesy, tacky side if it's not done right. But I think that if you paint over the top of it, add some dimension and use the collage to be pieces of a bigger picture, then this is a great way to use collage and help it to feel like one cohesive piece instead of a few pieces that you tacked on to something. And that really helps with this process. Now, I want to just say, if you happen to be one of those people who is from my Bible journaling community, stretch yourself, get outside of your Bible, join me for this prophetic art challenge, and get yourself an art journal or a canvas, and spend some time asking the Lord what he's speaking to you, regardless of whether you're from my Bible journaling community or not. Make sure that this isn't about just studying the word and creating something. This is something where we want to stretch ourselves to hear the voice of God for ourselves. And I always say that when God gives us responsibilities, he gives it to us in, in measurements so that we can grow in those giftings. So today, if you're new to hearing the voice of God, then you're going to be hearing the voice of God for yourself. As we grow, we start to hear 
the voice of God for our friends and family. And then in time for our community, for perhaps our, our smaller community, our church or something like that. And then it might be our wider community and then our region and then our nation and then the world. Do you see where I'm going with this? There's a level of responsibility that we have for today that can grow in time. So if you're new to this, I want you to tell me what you're going to create on harmony that has to do with you and what God's speaking to you. Did you see how I just scrubbed that out? If you make a mistake, is this a non-porous surface because it's got clear gesso? So you can actually just scrub it away if you don't like it and come back in. And I'm using a more detailed, fine point brush there to get into the detail now. And then I'm just gonna create those veins. So whatever part of this journey you're on, if you've been doing this a long time and you just wanna be part of what we're doing here, then take time to do that. And figure out what part of the journey you're on. Don't start prophesying over people who you perhaps haven't gained a spiritual authority to do so, if that makes sense. Start with yourself. What? How can you live in harmony with those around you? How can this be something, a declaration, a prophetic declaration over your family life or something like that? about harmony and what image are you going to use to depict that and then maybe you want to use collage maybe you want to use any other art medium you don't have to follow my art mediums you don't have to do the same picture as me what you do have to do is create on the theme and understand the heart behind what we're doing in this lesson so the theme is harmony and i want to remind you though that this is to do with this. So if you've in the past created something on this topic, it I really would say that it doesn't really count to say, I did this five years ago and it kind of fits, so I'm gonna share it as part of this. I want you to create something fresh that means something in this season for you and the world around you. Maybe you wanna speak something over and breathe life over a community and you feel that that's something that you can do, let this be an encouraging thing that breathes life over things. This is not about correction, this is about encouragement. And let's breathe life over the things around us. So please join me, let's create together. And then you'll need to get into the Prophetic Arts for Jesus Facebook group and share an image of what you're doing and say, in the comment, in that description, when you share, make sure that you say that it's part of, say, Prophetic Art Challenge Lesson 1. And then we can all follow along and we can search in the group to find examples of what people are doing on that particular lesson. I can't wait for you to join me. It's your turn to create, so pop on over to my blog, get whatever you need, and let's get started. I'll see you soon. You are so loved.